What you doing, guys? This is Mrs. Klein. Hi, it's Miss Burkholz. We are here with your Lesson 22 podcast entitled China's Contacts with the Outside World. You can follow along in your history book. We're starting on page 299 today. The guiding question for this unit is, How did foreign contact policies of three medieval Chinese dynasties affect China? And our vocab is maritime, Ming, Mongols, and tributary. All right, introduction. Medieval China had contact with foreign, um, with foreign nations and peoples. However, policies toward these contacts varied with different dynasties, including the Tang Dynasty, the Mongol or the Huan Dynasty, and the Ming Dynasty. At times, the Chinese welcomed foreign contacts. Great cultural exchange resulted as new ideas and products flowed into and out of China through trade routes across Central Asia and on the sea. Many Chinese, however, resented foreign influence. More than once, such feelings led rulers to try to limit the influence of foreigners. All right, section one, foreign contacts under the Tang Dynasty. During the Tang Dynasty from 618 to 907, China welcomed contact with foreigners. Traders and visitors brought new ideas, goods, fashions, and religions into the country. Merchants, missionaries, and other visitors also came to China. Thousands of Arabs, Turks, Persians, Tibetans, Indians, Jews, Koreans, Japanese, and other foreigners lived in seaports and in Chang'an. All these foreign contacts brought about much cultural exchange. All right, the Tang Chinese, especially the upper class, um, welcomed new products and ideas from foreign cultures. They wore rubies, pearls, and other jewels, and they drank from goblets made of glass, a material that had previously been unknown in China. Chinese music was greatly influenced by melodies and musical instruments from India, Persia, and Central Asia. New religions also came to China, which the Tang Dynasty tolerated. Jews, Christians, and Muslims built houses of worship in Chang'an and were even allowed to preach, although they converted few Chinese. The Indian religion of Buddhism had come to China hundreds of years earlier, but it became a major part of Chinese life under the Tang Dynasty. Toward the end of the Tang Dynasty, foreigners and their beliefs became less welcome in China. The government placed restrictions on foreigners when a people called the Uyghurs began attacking China from across the borders. All right, the wealth of Buddhist monasteries also brought resentment. In addition, influential Chinese began attacking Buddhism as a foreign religion. The persecution of Buddhists lasted only a few years, but it greatly weakened the power of the monasteries. Despite this distrust of foreigners, the Chinese continued to trade with other lands. Thanks to the compass and improved shipbuilding techniques, overseas trade continued to thrive during the Song Dynasty from 960 to 1279. Section 2, Foreign Contacts Under the Yuan Dynasty, or Huan Dynasty. Yep. As you have read, the, the Song Dynasty came to an end when the Mongols conquered China. Recall that the Mongol leader Kublai Khan became Emperor of China in 1279. He called his dynasty the Huan Dynasty. Under the Mongols, foreigners ruled China for nearly a hundred years. The vast Mongol empire stretched clear across Asia. The Mongols also developed a far-reaching maritime trade. Travel and trade expanded as never before, and more and more foreigners came to China. Some of the foreign visitors who traveled the Silk Road from Europe to China were Christian missionaries. They wanted to convert the Chinese to Christianity, and they also wanted Kublai Khan to form an alliance with Europeans against the Muslims. Both goals failed. Still, Christian missionaries did make some converts, and they helped bring new ideas to China. Sea trade also flourished under the Yuan emperors. Many foreigners who came to China bought, brought special skills. Muslim architects, for example, built the Yuan capital of Dadu. Uh, Muslim and Persian doctors also established new hospitals. Foreign contacts also allowed skills and information to flow from China and spread to other parts of the world. Europeans, for example, learned about the Chinese inventions of gunpowder and printing. All right, the role of foreigners in China. Foreigners enjoyed, enjoyed high status under the Yuan rulers, and foreign merchants in particular were given special privileges. Kublai Khan appointed many visiting foreigners to official positions in his government. The most famous was Marco Polo, a young Italian merchant and adventurer who traveled throughout China. The Khan liked Marco and enjoyed his accounts of his travels, so he sent Marco to represent him on an inspection tours around China. The tale of Polo's travels gave Europeans first-hand knowledge of China and further stimulated interest in trade. All right, moving on, number three, foreign contacts under the Ming Dynasty. The Chinese eventually rebelled against the Yuan. From 1368 to 1644, the Ming Dynasty ruled China. Although foreign contacts continued, later Ming rulers tried to isolate China from foreign influence. 
Under the Ming, many other countries were China's tributaries. The Chinese emperors acknowledged their rulers, provided military help, and allowed them to trade with China. In return for bringing tribute, the ambassadors were given valuable gifts. Emperor Shang Zhu, who came to power in 1402, wanted more tributes, tributaries. He gave a trusted advisor, Zhang He or Zhang Ha, the title Admiral of the Western Seas and told him to sail to the countries beyond the horizon. Zhang Ha was, di was to display China's power, to give gifts, and to collect tribute. In 1405, uh, Zhang He set off with a fleet of more than 300 ships, the largest fleet in the world at that time. Song He made seven expeditions between 1405 and 1433. Song He's ships returned laden with precious cargo. All right. When Zhang He or Zhang He died in about 1434, a new emperor ruled China. From that time on, the dynasty turned inward. Ming rulers wanted to protect their people from foreign influences, so they forbade travel outside China. The Ming dynasty and its scholar officials wanted a strongly unified state based on a single ruler and traditional values. The Ming desire for uniformity made it difficult for the government to change in response to new condi conditions. Peasant rebellions helped to bring down the government in 1644, ending the Ming dynasty. All right, our lesson summary, you guys. Foreign contacts under the Tang. During the Tang dynasty, ideas and goods from other places flowed into China. Buddhism, imported goods from India, became very popular. Eventually, however, many Chinese came to resent foreigners and foreign influences. Foreign contacts under the, the Huan. Coming from outside China themselves, the Mongols of the Huan dynasty promoted trade and gave foreigners important positions in the government. Cultural exchange flourished. At the same time, the Chinese began to resent their non-Chinese rulers. This attitude lasted long after the Huan dynasty was overthrown. All right, foreign contacts under the Ming. Under the early Ming rulers, China collected tribute from other lands and undertook great maritime ex um, expeditions, such as those led by Zheng He. Um, later Ming emperors, however, tried to close China off from foreign influence, even forbidding Chinese people to travel abroad. All right, you guys, that was lesson 22, China's contacts with the outside world. You should be able to answer that question. How did the foreign contact policies of three medieval Chinese dynasties affect China? And don't forget those vocab words, you guys, maritime, Ming, Mongols, and tributary. Bye. We're done.